You're welcome back. This is News File, it's your most authoritative news analysis platform. Um, Kwame Sapong Esiedu has a very interesting proposition. He says the best move is for the eminent chiefs and the president of the republic to commit themselves to attend both funerals. They must be physically present. If that happens, no one can threaten to enter the palace and entrench themselves there. Uh, I think that's a very interesting proposition. Mm. Of course, when the president and these eminent chiefs are going, you can mm. imagine the retinue of security mm. yeah. that will follow. Mm -hmm. um, so they'll be left to take care of the situation, whatever it is, maybe. Mm. But again, it does look like it will enhance mm. you know, the entire process. Yeah. So that's from Kwame Esedu Sapong. Um, this one, okay, we are speaking on a different matter. But the majority of the messages on this clearly is that there is an appeal for people in Dagbon to give peace a chance. Uh, Eliasu says that the youth, chiefs, and people of Dagbon are grateful to the eminent chiefs for finality on the feud and a peace pact to bring out reconciliation and final peace. Um, the Wimti, to wit, we are tired. Hence the uh, peace initiative. The Wimti. The Wimti. The Wimti. The Wimti. The Wimti. Okay, 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 okay. Um, so different and far away from how I'll say it in Guruni. <laughs> okay. Now, um, what are we trying to achieve by, um, okay, let's move on to the other matter of the police and <coughs> the matters that have um, come up as far as government announcements are concerned. First, James, what do you make of the revelations as announced by government? We don't know what the report of the committee that look at it is all we know is what government through a statement has informed us that in fact the youth are vindicated yeah. they were never robbers yeah. and they shot and killed them and so what should happen something that is shocking <laughs> if you and let me extend my condolence to the relatives of the deceased seven individuals uh, if you attempt to do some reconciliation of the police own narrative in the aftermath of the shooting incidents and what the report is now telling us, you'd want to ask questions. So how did the police come by the information they put out in the public um, domain? And so for me, the fact that the police on that occasion put out what has now turned out to be a palpable falsehood, lends credence to the numerous calls for uh, there to be an independent police complaints commission. Remember that um, the public clearly were of the view that they wouldn't have the police investigate their own because they would be cover-ups. So government paid heed and calls to be set up an independent a committee. All of us extended those invitations to government. I, I was one person who said, look, <coughs> let there be an independent investigation. They yielded, and this is the outcome. My only worry, something is the failure of government to make the report public. Let them publish the report so that we can all discuss this matter from an informed uh, position. Look, I am reliably informed that even after the interdiction of the men, uh, you know, after government's own directive that the 21 officers involved be interdicted to pave way for investigations, the co police administration has set up a committee to investigate, commence criminal investigations, but they still haven't seen the report. Mm -hmm. So it is important that one, the report is forwarded to the police themselves and, and published. After all, what is what is it that must be kept confidential about that report? What is it? 
okay, I have to make the point that it is not the entire police administration we are against. The country is against the 21 officers who decided to use brute force and fire at those seven people whose innocence has now been proven by the investigative committee. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of good people in the police service who sacrificed their lives even when some have lost their lives, they have been maimed, they have been killed. Look, a few days ago, one police officer, an officer was shot when he decided to engage armed robbers, with armed robbers. He's in critical condition. I pray for his speedy recovery. If you, if, if you take into account the uh, Inspector Shilevi's own killing at uh, uh, Kwabenya. Mm. So police lose their lives, I mean, virtually on a daily basis in an attempt to uh, provide for the, uh, I mean, security of our homeland. So we are not against the entire police administration, but where actions are so blatant and cannot be justified, we would also speak out. Mm. So it is time. We started the attempt to get this po independent police commission in place. We got to an advanced stage, stakeholder consultations, we engaged with Shraj, Shraj clearly has that mandate, but you see, they are overstretched in terms of the uh, uh, technical expertise and yeah. even the uh, resources. Mm. So if we have an independent body, a standalone uh, uh, body, uh, it, it would help matters. Mm. People have taken matters to Shraj and it's taking years. Yeah. So sometimes they wonder Absolutely. whether there's any incentive going to Shraj in the first place. Yes, um, I mean, Samson. The, the MP for the area, um, <coughs> uh, Muntaka Mubarak, he says interdiction is not enough. They have killed people, seven people. Well, but, but that's not the end of it. You recall that the interdiction has been referred to uh, for further actions and all that. But let me, let me state this. You see, on the floor of parliament, um, in the presence of my brother sometimes, I have made this point about some of the police operations regulations and all that, especially the one that talks about the use of minimum force mm. to avert a situation. Mm -hmm. That has no mm. definition. <laughs> <laughs> that phrase, mm. use minimum force, it has no meaning. Because anything they do, you ask, they say that they try to use minimum force to solve mm. the situation. And that's it. It's provided for by regulations. You see, we need to, I think, uh, some of them, some of them are so professional, in fact, we don't have to lump all of them yeah, together. Absolutely. Some of them are so professional absolutely. in whatever they do. But those who engage in acts like this and they are like, we need to do some retraining and all that to make sure that we give them the focus to ensure that they protect us rather than becoming a danger to us. Because if you look at this, at the beginning, it was categorical that there was a shootout. Mm between mm. the dead mm. the persons mm. and, and, and the police and all that. And it has turned out to be the opposite from, from what we are getting. Mm. And look at the caliber of people who investigated. What, that that, that was according to the police narrative. Yes. Mm. That they were armed robbers yes. who engaged them in, in the a shootout. shootout. That's what I'm saying. And they decided so to kill So from what them. we have mm. now, it means that was palpable falsehood. Mm. Because the uh, Justice DO uh, Committee mm. has come out to say otherwise. And they are recommending. Uh, certain thing. The government has issued a statement on the matter uh, through the uh, Minister for Information and all that. I, I, it only tells us that we need to, 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 to rethink the way we handle situations of, of this nature. Mm. Because when the story first broke, a lot of people spoke about it. People condemned what happened and, and, and others said that it was, it was justified considering the fact that there was an upsurge in crime and robbery and all that. But from this particular uh, outcome that we have is a most unfortunate happening and steps will be taken and as you have actually uh, realized the directive has been given to the police who will proceed to do what is necessary under their rules and they are saying they want the prosecutions to be swift o of course of course and again you see this is where it's very important Samson I want you to take note of this so that again tomorrow morning people don't start saying that Attorney General has failed to prosecute people mm -hmm. I want to put this on record because if it has to be prosecuted, there has to be a docket built by the police through an invest or uh, any investigative body, BNI or police, properly built and forwarded to us for action to be taken. And you see, this is a matter that I'm not discussing the merits, mm -hmm. but you know that in murder cases, the standard of proof is so high. Yeah. You may have to get people who come and then say that 
I saw policeman A shoot at this person mm -hmm. and all that. You have to give because seven people died. And if there were 21 police officers involved, who they may have who? been shot by seven people yeah. or less or more. So all those pieces of evidence will have to be guarded before same is uh, built into a duplicate document and forwarded yeah. to the Attorney General's Department. Yeah. So that tomorrow morning, they don't say that uh, uh, my, my, my mother, Madame Gloria, who we saw so in our, our <laughs> ministry and leading us very well, <laughs> tomorrow morning somebody will say that she's not prosecuting people even though evidence, evidence including circumstantial all. evidence. Yes, right? I agree with you. Okay. So uh, on this matter, I, I think that first uh, condolences to the BB right. family. Okay. So then uh, uh, I know that government mm. is committed to, to doing what is right. That's why mm. this step has okay. been taken. So we need to come Kweku, with government. Kweku, to we, um, Pemka says, give us the report. Palpable falsehood. Okay, I'm tired. I'm tired using all of that English. <laughs> so I say lies. <laughs> <laughs> See, how, how did you, that come you, about? You gave us this <coughs> research material. Uh, it just, just struck me, this paragraph. Mm. It says that Santi Regional Police Commander, Deputy Commissioner of Police, Mr. Kwesi Buku, at a news conference, displayed seven boxes with each containing 25 runs of ammunition, mm -hmm. 88 pieces of ammunition of AK-47 assault rifles, and some clothes that were retrieved from the suspected armed robbers. This is from the police. Yeah. When it happened. When it happened. Wow. See, I don't know the gentleman. Mm. But I think he's in real big trouble. He presented this to all of us. Mm. I remember we discussed it here. Yeah. And we even, they said there were exchanges. Yeah. So we even said, well, forensic examination of the scene could mm. tell if there were indeed bullets from here to there. Right. I, I, I really, well, maybe I shouldn't jump the gun. Mm. But he told us this story. He should help us in determining where those, these things came from. Mm. So did the police bring this from their own custody <laughs> and presented it as hap uh, belonging to the so-called armed robbers? It's institutional integrity is critical when it comes to the police. Does that, does that take your mind to the MPP headquarters matters? Yes, it's the same thing. <laughs> you see, if the integrity of the institution is critical, mm. This, this is really bad. I'm being honest with you. But as I said, perhaps I shouldn't jump the gun. Okay. After all, they are now going to do more investigations. Mm -hmm. But can the police boss extricate himself? Where did those things come from? Mm. Oh, please. Mm. And you see, unfortunately, dead men don't talk. Mm -hmm. But I'm hoping that there were people, eyewitnesses around too, right. who could collaborate. But you see, this, this, this ammunition and things, mm -hmm. Didn't come from the skies. Right. This, okay. Should be so, very like Penka said, the people around the place too, you should assist the Attorney General. Mm -hmm. If you witness anything, you should come forward. The problem is that the police is going to conduct investigations. Criminal investigations, who conducts it? Mm -hmm. Or they will the give police. it to the BNI. Because there was a BNI representative you know, for the community. I, I wanted to mm -hmm. talk about that until we could. Yeah. Yeah, so Whether after making those judgments at the beginning, yeah. they will have the standing to conduct investigations. Yes, in okay. Good question. That's going to be very so fundamental. It in should this go matter. to either. You may the have to go to another independent body. Okay. You know, maybe BNI or something. Okay. Who can look at it huh? and then hmm. uh, document it? That could be the element of solidarity. Of the earlier right. conclusions that mm. people had and all that. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. Disturbing. Interesting. This is um, I mean, J okay. James says the reports. We mm. should get to see it all okay. of that. Okay. Um, I was in Takra yesterday with okay. uh, Anas Armey Anas. He says okay. they should pass the RTI mm -hmm. so that they reduce his work, mm -hmm. so that all of us can do a bit of Anas. Yes. So how do we get the document? Why is it necessary? <laughs> oh, very well, necessary. One of these days <laughs> will <laughs> occupy parliament. Exactly. Yes. That is the way to I'll go. I'll be there. Yes. Yes. I've, I've suspended yes. demonstrations. Okay. But that day, oh, I'll but join. We're, we're right. making yeah. progress. We're, up to okay. we're making progress. Uh, progress. No, we're, no, we're making worry. progress. You hear, you hear uh, from us. So, parliament, you know, considering that this is so long since 2010. You are talking about RTI. No. Okay, the police. Police. <laughs> okay, so the police. Okay, so yeah. police. My uh, little comment about it is that, you know, in the uh, police, uh, Ghana police service instructions, mm. the point about it is that uh, those involved, even before this matter, that is to say for all policemen, as long as you open to use firearms, 
the service instruction says that that policeman will appear before some judicial committee or judicial forum or another to answer for it. For, to be clear, let me read yeah. this. It says that, so that service instruction 97, firearms used by police. Two, it says, it must be clearly understood that every police officer resorting to the use of firearms or ordering an armed party under his command to open fire will almost certainly be called upon to justify his action before mm. a judicial tribunal of some kind. Okay, so it's just to make the point that this uh, service instructions have been here all these years, mm. that naturally, once there's been use of firearms, the policemen have to be tried, either the service inquiry or in a, a normal court of competent jurisdiction. Okay. So we should let the process take its course. Mm. It's good that uh, Honorable Mutaka is uh, watching, and the media, you are doing a good job. So you should put pressure, then let the investigations go on, and then we can have the final verdict. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we our time is up, but we have a minute. Okay. What so do you think of the Supreme Court's decision on the Munchie Three? Ah, uh, Munchie <laughs> Three. Upholding <laughs> President Mahama's decision. I'm sure, Mama, it's victory for him, man. <coughs> victory for him. The point is this. Um, Number one, um, I hope that we all understand that this whole case was not about rearresting the Muntier Tre. Mm. No, it was just to have the constitutional interpretation. Because I've heard in some quarters the point being made that it was about making sure that they will be rearrested and sent into custody. No. Uh, the Supreme Court, you know, has always done it the way it has Maybe to be Maybe there would have been consequential orders. Consequential. That they should I, go I back and serve the full se that, sentence. Yes. Okay. Ah, so well, go ahead. Well, so the yeah. Supreme Court hasn't come to that decision. So right. thankfully, that, that's good. So the propaganda that they were going to be rearrested mm. has been thrown out of the window. Mm. Yeah, so it, it's good. That's how democracy should proceed. Mm. Okay. Quick, what do you say about this? Well, you remember when the decision was taken to pardon them, some of us said that the president was walking into a landmine, mm. which he did. And that reflected part and parcel of the election verdict. Mm -hmm. My candid opinion mm -hmm. didn't help at all. But constitutionally, <coughs> I was always a bit, I find it intriguing mm -hmm. that that particular policy, a, a decision could be challenged. I find mm -hmm. it, and I'm happy the Supreme Court okay. uh, made it stand in right. terms of the constitutionality. Okay. <laughs> I think if we can, right. it, yes. Uh, yes. Just, just one minute. Mm. You see, I, I want us to all, as lawyers, mm. to try and get copies and read. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Because it's a very interesting one. Mm. It was 5-2. Five 5-2, two. Mm. Five two, yeah. It wasn't 7-0 yeah. or something. Yeah. It was 5-2. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So let's try and get the decision and read. Because mm. I personally thought that uh, this particular one was novel. Mm. I mean, I mean, if you look at Article 72, it's clear mm. on what the president yeah. can do in circumstances yeah. like this. Mm. But this was a matter that bordered on the principle of separation of powers. Mm. Mm. Whether, looking at the circumstances of this mm. matter, they were convicted mm. on the basis of um, a contempt of court. Mm. That same court. Criminal that sat on a criminal contempt. Mm. <coughs> and then after that, uh, the president pardoned them. Whether that was not going to compromise <coughs> the principle of separation of powers and all okay. that. But it made a pronouncement. It will be right. a guide going forward. Mm -hmm. right. Maybe next time, okay. It could happen and then my guest have been way Abdul Malik Kuba, who is the chief of the <laughs> Crusading Guys <laughs> newspaper. Have my take. Martin Pebble, <laughs> oh. he is a lawyer. <laughs> you, you uh, yes, Joseph Dindyok Penka is <laughs> <laughs> MP Timpani and Deputy Attorney General. James Agalga, SMP <laughs> Bulsa North, ranking member, Defense and Interior Committee oh, of Parliament, and former Deputy <laughs> Minister of the Interior. I'm Samson Ladia Yanini. My outfit, as always, is by Latida. Have a good afternoon. <laughs>